Hi, I'm Daria, textile and surface pattern designer and artist, both traditional and digital. On my channel, I'm talking about textiles, pattern, color and artwork. I create artwork and fabric designs using watercolor, gouache, ink and digital tools such as Adobe Illustrator. Patterns are everywhere. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell icon so you guys don't miss any new videos by me. Today I would like to share with you an entire year of my textile design work that I created participating in design challenges. Those are held weekly by a company called Spoonflower. You might or might not be familiar with it, so I'll briefly explain it, just in case. Spoonflower is a print-on-demand company that prints custom fabric, wallpaper and home decor items once they are ordered by the customer. The designs on the website are created by independent artists from all over the world, and I'm one of them. Hence, Spoonflower is also a design community. Anybody can be a contributing designer with some basic understanding on fabric printing. Spoonflower also offers some basic tools to start creating fabric designs for your own purposes. For example, if you're a maker and you would like to sew something with your own designed fabric, or you can also post your designs for sale once you have ordered at least a swatch of your design. Like I said, Spoonflower also holds weekly competitions for artists. All through 2021, I was taking part in most of them. I did 41 out of 46, which I impressed myself with. So they give you a design brief, which means a topic or a task, for example, stone fruit or llamas. And then you are free to design fabric in any which way that works for you. You can create your fabric design using any medium of preference. It can be digital, art made in Procreate, for example, Photoshop or Illustrator, or traditional media such as watercolor or gouache. As long as you know how to handle your work on the computer and turn it into a textile design, preferably a repeating pattern, you're good to go. The community members then have several days to vote on designs that they like and you can vote for multiple designs at the same time and then uh, the winners get some nice prizes. Usually it's a Spoonflower store credit so you can order some custom fabric, tea towels, wallpaper and whatnot. So I've put together all of my 2021 designs with the topics listed below and I'll also include the challenges that I skipped with some brief explanation why. It's a quick two minute slideshow and then I'm going to talk about the reasons for the challenges, the pros and cons, the difficulties and more. Stay tuned. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed my little video. All these designs are available to purchase as fabric and home decor items, by the way, in my Spoonflower shop. I'll leave the link below. 
As you have seen, I test and try different styles of artwork. I switch media and some of the designs are really painstaking and some are not, to say the least. This is because the goals for each challenge were different for me personally as an artist. Sometimes I just really wanted to try a fun technique or I just tweaked an old piece that was sitting in my portfolio and other times I really wanted to create something meaningful and big for my portfolio. I have to say though that you are supposed to use new original artwork for each challenge. Of course you should never use anybody else's art or photos from Pinterest or the internet. Some people assume and I've heard that if it's on Pinterest you can take it. No, 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 please don't do that. Artwork always belongs to an artist. So if you have a piece that you originally created previously and you haven't used it on Spoonflower, you are free to use it, right? Why not? Now let's talk about the reasons for the challenges. So first of all, why does Spoonflower need this? Well, it's a great promotional tool and a great way to get designers uh, create some new awesome artwork because designers are the lifeblood of Spoonflower which makes a profit from all the products sold. They produce and manufacture everything in-house in their place in North Carolina. So of course they are doing it for profit. It's important to say that Spoonflower challenges are usually really on point in terms of trend. So uh, they definitely do a lot of research on that end. They give us an opportunity to create some trendy artwork, which will potentially be in demand and sell well. Potentially, that's an important point. <laughs> also, Spoonflower is a very community-centered organization, so it's a nice way to engage with the like-minded people. Spoonflower does a really great job on featuring and promoting the winners, so that's a nice bonus, right? There are artists who make a living off of Spoonflower sales, but it definitely takes time to build up. So an average weekly challenge gets about 700 entries and sometimes it gets up to 1500 on particularly popular topics or if Spoonflower does an interesting collaboration with a cool brand or an artist agent or a popular figure in the community. The least number of entries that I have personally seen is under 500, I think it was 480. I've been closely monitoring and actively participating in the challenges for about one and a half years. The best that I've done so far is the 9th and the 12th places. And places are often shared among several people if it's a tie. So it's really hard to win and if you, even if you do win, you do not get a fat check or anything like that. You do not land uh, a collaboration. So why do it, you might ask, right? What, what's the point? <laughs> there can be several reasons. First, if you are serious about selling designs on Spoonflower, I strongly suggest that you do take part in as many weekly challenges as you can without sacrificing quality for quantity, of course. It's definitely the most exposure you are going to get as an artist on this particular platform. There are a lot of great designers there and sometimes it's really hard to get noticed unless you come to Spoonflower as an established, uh, accomplished artist with a following that adores you. You absolutely do not have to participate in challenges. You can just upload designs to your shop and hope they sell. But uh, design challenges are this festival time, figuratively speaking, when everybody's out there looking at designs, shopping for designs, you know, makers are out there looking for new fabric for their projects. If people like the design that you've submitted in the challenge, they might visit your shop and they might like something else, right? I myself look out for new designers all the time, someone to follow or even competitors to study. Another great point about Spoonflower is that you keep all the rights to your work. And believe me, it's a big deal. Some other platforms offer similar challenges and print-on-demand sales, but they claim artwork as their own in the end, as the worst case scenario. And best case scenario, they just don't mention you. This is pretty common and you have to read the fine print to make sure everything works for you. Spoonflower always keeps your name, your business name on your designs and you are free to sell them on other non-exclusive platforms such as Redbubble and Society6. 
If you are not so sales driven and are just discovering your artist's journey, Spoonflower challenges are a great real life way to test the waters in design. The briefs are real, they're usually on trend, which means people are looking for products like this. So if there is a dinosaur challenge, it means there is a need for dinosaur prints. I'm pretty sure Spoonflower has a sales and trend research teams working hard on that. So why not use the fruits of their hard work to the advantage of us all, right? You can see what other designers are submitting and also track the voting process that shows you what people are actually choosing. That's a great market study, right? Now I have to warn you, there is a catch here. Like with any other social media, it's easy to get trapped in likes or lack of them and just get frustrated. Please don't let it happen. Although I have to admit, it's not always easy, especially if you, you worked really hard on a design. There are essentially two ways to go here for an artist. If you'd like, you can closely watch which designs and which creators succeed all the time. And I assure you there will be a common thread there and try to learn what makes their designs great. Why do people love them? You can learn a certain technique. For example, Procreate has been really on the rise and um, some particular topics are really trending. For example, mid-century modern is so popular on Spoonflower or cats always do well, you know, or a certain density of a pattern or a layout might be more popular. Spoonflower is essentially a market like any other with its own trends and demand. The other way to go is to let go of expectations and likes and votes and just pursue with your own style and goals. Even if you don't get 300 votes, you only get 30 votes. These 30 people might be your ideal customer who will keep coming back for your style and what you have to offer to the platform. They don't want the trendy stuff, they want your stuff. I personally have been doing the later route. I know that my style is not particularly trend forward for Spoonflower. That's a very important uh, point. I'm aware of what is trending, but I choose to focus on watercolor and large scale patterns, having wallpaper in mind, because that's what I do best and that's what I like. And that matters because your creativity is important. Always trying to keep it professional, of course. Whichever topic or style you choose, the repeats have to work and the colors have to work and so on. So to sum it up, once again, the pros of the challenges are, it's great exposure, it boosts your sales as a designer, customers big and small do look at Spoonflower challenges. It might be a fabric mill or a small business making baby clothes, for example, or dog collars or women's apparel, anything exists, trust me. Uh, it's fun, it inspires you, it's just fun to do. It keeps you within a vibrant design community. It boosts your trend awareness and you know as designers we do need to keep an eye on the trend even if we avoid them in the end, you have to know what is going on in the world. Uh, it lets you grow as a designer because if you watch people succeed in doing great designs, you kind of want to keep up, you know? You keep all the rights to your artwork and it's important. You are free to use your own designs if it's permitted elsewhere by licensing and usage terms. And you might win some great prizes, right? As for the cons, the cons are it is hard work. It's not easy to stand out. You have to do a lot of self-promotion and you have to post it on Instagram, Pinterest, your website, wherever. Just kind of shout about what you are doing because, you know, there are so many designers out there. You might get frustrated if you're not winning. I did get into that trap, not even once. It takes a while to build up a portfolio and find your perfect customer. Trust me, there are some great professional awesome creative designers on Spoonflower who are not necessarily winning any competitions. That's why I'm strongly suggesting you do not put all your eggs in one basket and do not count on quick returns from the hard work you're putting in your Spoonflower shop. I feel like it applies to any other field of freelance design, right? Not necessarily textile design. 
That's it. If you have enjoyed this video, I would appreciate your like. It helps me promote my channel and don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, pattern underscore talent, and check out my Spoonflower shop. If you have any questions or kind comments, please feel free to leave them below. And remember, patterns are everywhere.